Professor Andrew Huberman released what he says is one of the most important podcasts he's ever recorded. It's on cortisol. Cortisol is not a stress hormone. Yes, cortisol is involved in stress, but cortisol's main job is to deploy energy. It's an energy producing hormone, in particular, a brain energy producing hormone. If you put people into very cold water, or even just cold for them, uncomfortably cold for them water, yes, they'll increase more cortisol. Yes, they'll release cortisol into their bloodstream. But if you're somebody who's concerned about elevating your cortisol too much, there's really no evidence to support that. In fact, the evidence points in exactly the opposite direction, which is that when people, men or women, do deliberate cold exposure regularly, more than twice per week, then the impact on cortisol is not significant. Huberman gets everything right. But he overlooks one thing, some of the best work on cortisol and cold plunge has been done at the Lithuanian Sports University by two friends of mine, Marius Brasidis and Rima Solianic. What they showed, and you have to look at the data very carefully, is that if you start with your cortisol already elevated, it's not likely that a cold plunge will lift it even further. It's as if your body knows you have plenty of cortisol and you don't need any more. If your cortisol is too low, an ice bath will bring it up. But if it's too high, it will not necessarily spike it further. For those people with low cortisol, they can correct it by doing an ice bath at a temperature that frightens them. For those people with high cortisol, like Mitch Wisnowski, the punter for the San Francisco 49ers, they can likely normalize it by acclimating themselves to the stress of the cold, doing an ice bath every day.